Hello from Ohio and welcome. What are these guys here? Some Viewmaster reels that remind me of my childhood. And my lovely wife have to do with 3D printing? Stick around and find out. You don't have to have a degree in engineering, be a product design specialist or a professional computer programmer in order to make some really cool things on your own. Let's learn how to do it together on Just Making It With Josh. So, what are those handsome gentlemen, those Viewmaster reels, and my wife have to do with 3D printing? Well, if you're not familiar with them, those are some of the members of the band BTS. I'll be honest, I don't know much about them. I'm not a pop music fan in general. I grew up on classic rock and grunge and some of the amazing sounds that came out of Seattle when I was younger. BTS, they're just not my jam. On the other hand, my wife, whom I adore, well, she absolutely adores BTS. She recently flew across the country to see them in concert twice. She is always listening to their music, and to be fully honest, I do kind of like their song, Yo. Uh, anyway, since she likes them so much, we had to go out and buy a bookshelf that sits across from my side of the bed that is just full of all of her BTS memorabilia. In fact, I wake up every morning to a picture of Jimin staring at me. Like I said, she loves BTS. And since she loves them so much, I figured I've got to make her something BTS related on my 3D printer. So she and I started going through her BTS stuff, and she showed me those boxes that had the Viewmaster reels in them. Uh, looking at them, I realized I could pretty easily make a box for her to display them in. A box kind of like this one right here. Look, it's just a simple purple box with the band's logo raised up on it. Nothing fancy. Now, let me be very clear. This video is not about BTS. Instead, it's all about how to take an image like the BTS logo and turn it into a printable piece. So. If you're hoping to hear a nuance and deep discussion on the symbolism contained in BTS's film out uh, video and how it fits in the larger narrative of their universe, you're going to be sadly disappointed in this video. But if you want to see how I made this box and learn how to do it on your own, this video is for you. The parts list on this project is going to be really simple. We'll need some PLA or other filament of your choice. I'm using Overture's black PLA for the logo and I'm using Overture's Purple PLA for the box itself. We'll also need some glue to put the pieces together once they're printed. And we're going to want a micrometer or some other measuring device to measure the boxes that our reels come in. Of course, we'll also need a 3D printer to print everything out. I'm using my Ender 3 V2. On the software side, there's also not a lot needed. You'll need to find a high quality image of the logo you want to put on your box. I think it's most helpful if you can find an image that has sharp, clean lines without a lot of background images or noise. It will make the tracing part of the process easier later on. You'll want to save it somewhere on your computer that's easy to access later as well. We'll also need some 3D design software. I'm going to be using FreeCAD as I usually do. I should note that none of the products, software, or bands I've mentioned or shown in this video have sponsored any portion of this video. The first step is to do some planning. So grab your notebook or some paper, sit down with your thoughts, and think through what challenges might lie ahead and what you might need to figure out in order to make this a success. Now, I'm not gonna lie, making a box with a logo on it isn't too difficult, but there are a few things to think through. Doing so now will make things easier when you get into FreeCAD and start designing your project. First, how big do I need my box to be? To figure that out, let's measure the things we wanna put inside that box. So for example, I want to put these smaller boxes in the box I make. So we'll measure how wide these things are using our micrometer here. Turns out they're about 103 millimeters. Let's add in a little bit of wiggle room and make the interior dimensions of our box 106 millimeters. Next, we need to figure out how tall we want our box to be. Now looking at our reels, I think we should make it about 60 millimeters tall. Um, we just kind of eyeball it, what I think is going to look good. Now, as far as front to back distance, I think we'll just go with a square. These are about 15 millimeters front to back. So if we make our printed box square, we'll be able to comfortably hold about six of them in there. Now for projects like this, I tend to go with two millimeter walls. Why? I really don't know. It seems sturdy enough. It's not too thick. Two millimeters just seems to work. So with this information, I think we're ready to switch over to FreeCAD and start designing everything. Let's open up FreeCAD and we'll go ahead and get started. 
I like to start actually with a spreadsheet. By creating a spreadsheet, it allows us to set up all of our parameters and for our parametric design. So let's open up our spreadsheet and we'll start putting in all of the key dimensions. So in this case, that will be the inside dimensions, both length, width, and depth, as well as wall thickness, and then a few calculated dimensions. It's important that each of these have an alias. I like to use this macro called Easy Alias, but you can also just come over here, select the B column, and put it in the alias name up here. In addition to those dimensions that we found from measuring our reels and we did during our planning, we need to create the outer dimensions. Those are all going to be calculated based on these dimensions. In addition to those, we'll also want to create a radius. This will be the small corner that will provide some rounding and reduce the amount of sharp edges. For the outer length, that's going to be two times the wall thickness plus the inside length. That will be the same formula for the outer width. The depth will only have one wall thickness, that's just the bottom, and the radius is just going to be one. And again, once we have all of these calculated, we use that macro and create our aliases. Lastly, I like to put an indication that these are all calculated values next to them so that in the future I'll know that those are calculated and that I don't need to change them. If I want to make any changes to the overall dimensions of the box, I'll come up here and make them on this. So we'll go ahead and close our spreadsheet. We'll go over to the part design workbench and we'll start by creating a new body. Within that, we'll create a sketch on the XY plane. From there, we'll create a rectangle, starting at the origin. And we'll go ahead and round off those corners at this stage by using the fillet tool. Next, we're going to impose a rate or constrain all of those with the same radius. So we'll come up here and grab our radius constraint tool. And that radius is going to be the spreadsheet dot radius that we put in our spreadsheet a little bit ago. What we can do at that point is grab that radius, hold down the control key, and click on the other radiuses. Hit the E key and that will make them all equal. Next, we need to constrain this to the origin. So we'll grab this dot and that one, and we're going to say that their horizontal distance should be zero. And then we'll grab this one and this one, and we'll say that its vertical distance should be zero. This now constrains us to the origin. Next, we'll grab this line segment, and we'll say that it's supposed to be equal to the length, the inside or the outside length. And we'll go ahead and make this equal to the outside width. And now that our sketch is fully constrained, we'll go ahead and close it. And we'll pad our sketch up to the outside depth.
Next, we're going to create a pocket. This will be the inside. So we'll choose that top face and create a sketch. Once again, we'll draw a rectangle. And we'll go ahead and put in those inner circles for the corners, the inner radius, using that fillet tool on the corners. Next, we'll select each of these corners and we'll constrain the radius. And we're going to say that yes, we want them all to share the same radius. And again, that radius will come from our spreadsheet. Now we'll come in and this time we want the distance horizontally and vertically to be our wall thickness. from the origin. So this one will then be the vertical constraint. Of the wall thickness. Lastly, we need to make these vertical and horizontal constraints equal to the inside dimensions. Once we have those in place, you can see that that fits nicely inside our existing box. So we'll go ahead and close that out make sure that our sketch is collect or selected, and then we'll create a pocket. The depth on that is going to be the inside depth. And then once that's done, if we tip this, we can see that our box now has some depth to it. So we will now go ahead and put the logo on. To do that, we'll spin around to the front of our box, get it centered here a little bit, and we'll open up the image workbench. You're going to choose this create a planar image in a 3D space. We'll grab our image logo, and we're going to want that to be on the front of the box, the XZ plane. So we'll choose OK. Obviously, this is a lot bigger than what we actually need, so we need to scale down the size. I think we ch we reduce it to about 15%, we should be fine. So we'll come in here and multiply it by 0.15 in all directions, both the X size and the Y size. And that looks like it's going to be about right. Now we need it to be sitting in the middle of our box. So we need to adjust the placement on that. We know that the X should be 55. And the Z we're going to bring up to about there looks about there looks pretty good at 23. So we'll go ahead and hit OK and keep that in place. Then we'll come back and we need to create a sketch. So we'll come up here, go to the workbench, go to the sketcher workbench, and we're going to create a new sketch. This is going to be on the XZ plane. And we'll use the multi-line tool just to trace over and generally about the right area for our logo. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll clean it up a little bit later. Next, I like to 
grab our top points and make sure that vertically they're on the same point, same level, and the same with these points here. And we'll do the same with the bottom points. This will make sure that our tops and bottoms are all about the same spot. Next, we just want to make sure that our distances are the same. So we'll check the distance between these two, and then we'll make it sure that it's the same on that side. So this horizontal distance is 15.81. So we'll make sure that this horizontal distance here is also 15.81. I was very close. Normally I like to make sure everything's constrained when I use the sketching tool, but with something like this it's not quite as important. So we'll go ahead and hit close at this point. We no longer need to see this image because we have it all sketched out. So now we need to pocket this into our box. So we'll come over to the part tool. We'll take our sketch we're actually going to make a copy of it real quick because we're going to need to use it twice. So we'll start here on this one and this will be our pocket. So we're actually going to extrude it for one millimeter because that's how deep we want this to go into the box. And we'll do that along the normal edge. And when we tip our box a little bit, we can see that it's popped out by one millimeter. Next, we're going to adjust the placement of this, and we're going to move it back one millimeter into the box. So you can see it's once again flush. So we'll hit OK. And next, we're going to make a cut. So we'll first select the pocket of our body. That's the thing we want to keep. Then we'll hold down control, click on the extrusion we just made. Then we'll come up here to the make a cut of two shapes. And when we click it, you can see that that's actually in, indented and embedded into our box. Next, we need to create the piece the, of the logo that we'll print out. So we'll click on that second sketch we made. This time we'll make it two millimeters thick because that'll leave us one millimeter inside the box and one millimeter out. We hit OK. And when we tip it, we'll see that we have the parts that will now be ready to print. We'll adjust the scaling on this in Cura later. Now all we need to do is switch over to the mesh design. We'll choose our cut. We'll create our mesh from our shape. And we'll give it a new name so we know what that is. So that's actually our box. And then we'll take our extrusion and do the exact same thing. Create mesh from shape. And we'll label that our logos. Now all we need to do is right click on those and export our mesh. And you can see that I've got some samples already. We'll call this box one. Well, box two, I should say. And then we'll do the same thing, export mesh, and we'll have logo too. Now we're ready to open those two up in our slicer and get them printed. Once we're in Cure, we can start by opening up our new boxes that we just created. So we'll start with box two. Looking around, you can see that it has our pocket for our logo in it. And so this is all ready to print. Once it's printed, we can then open up Logo 2. This one requires a little bit more thought and effort into it. First of all, we need to lay the part down. So we'll come around to the back of it, click on it, and then we'll come here to this Rotate tab, and we'll choose Select 
face to align to the build plate, and we'll select the back of it. That will lay it down. Next, we need to scale it. If we printed it this size, it wouldn't actually fit in because it's too big. It's the exact same size as our pocket, so we need to reduce it by just a little bit. So we'll come over here to scaling. We're going to turn off uniform scaling because we still want it to be two meters thick, but we will change this to 99% and 99%. That amount of reduction should be enough for a printer. If you print it out and it's still a little tight, you can try reducing it by another percentage point. But once you've made those changes, laid it flat and changed the scaling, you're ready to slice it and get it printed. We are now going to progress to some steps which are a bit more difficult. Ready, set, and begin. The finishing work on this project is really straightforward. All we need to do is take our three pieces, glue them in place. So we'll just put a couple of drops of glue down. You don't need a lot, a little bit goes a, a long way. Push it in place, give it a hold, and that's it. As my kids would say, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And here we have it. It's just a simple box. It's nothing fancy, but I think this project illustrates a couple of very useful things to keep in mind. First, by using a spreadsheet and tying all the constraints of the project to it, we're able to easily resize this box in the future. Second, and the thing I think is more interesting, is how easy it is to take an existing image file and turn it into a 3D printed image that we can use in our projects. Third, this project ended up being tough in ways that I didn't expect at the beginning. Uh, this is pretty easy to design, should have been pretty easy to print. I showed you the whole design process. But for whatever reason, my printer just got all clogged up and I had a hard time printing this box. Uh, before the project was finished, I ended up tearing much of my printer apart. And then my time-lapse camera stopped working. I mean, the time-lapse I showed you was actually one of the bad boxes. These types of challenges are going to pop up sometimes. Stick with it, work through them, and you'll learn stuff along the way. On this project, I learned a lot more about how my printer works and how to fix it when things go wrong. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, while I might not find this box to be the most interesting thing I've ever made, my wife is going to like it a lot. One of the fun parts about this hobby is being able to make personalized things for the folks around us that we care about. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll like it and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all again in my next video.